Hello, this video is about Lancer's application framework known as the VLF. This video is part two of a three-part video series. Part one of this video introduced the VLF's three-step development process. We are now going to look at step one, application prototyping, in more detail. My starting point is the Visual Lancer IDE. This is where all Lancer developers work regardless of whether they use the VLF or not. To start prototyping a new VLF-based application, I go to the Tools menu and launch the VLF Developers Workbench. Next, I choose the application framework I want to work on. In this case, a new empty framework named the Demo Framework. We are now using the VLF Developers Workbench. I can create the various components of a new application manually, but for this video, I'm going to use the Instant Prototyping Assistant to save time. The prototyping assistant will ask me some questions and then generate a prototype application for me. I don't have to do everything in one go, I can come back later and add more parts to my prototype. First it wants me to name the business objects that will be in my application. These objects are end user objects, not IT programming objects. These are the things or objects that end users will work with in my new application. Things like customers, orders, products, invoices, etc. In this case, my application is going to contain employees, offices, orders and products, so I type them in and click Next. Now I am asked what actions users will be able to take with these business objects. I am going to specify details, print, ship, approve, transfer, history and charges to start. Then I assign these actions to the business objects they relate to. When I am happy with this, I click Next. Now I can group my various business objects into applications. In the VLF, the term application is flexible, but it typically means a group of related business objects. So here I am going to create two applications named Human Resources and Commercial. Then I arrange my business objects into their respective applications and click Next. On the summary display, I click Finish and my prototype is generated. My prototype application is instantly executable. I can elect to execute it as a Windows desktop application, known as a VLF Win application, or I can execute it as a web browser application, known as a VLF1 application. I choose to start up my prototype as a VLF1 web browser application. It launches in the Chrome web browser and requests that I log on. When I open the main navigation menu, you can see my commercial and human resource applications. If I open the commercial application, you can see my orders and products business objects. Finally, I open the Orders business object and you can start to see my prototype application come to life. I am now working with orders. My prototype application has a filter which allows me to create lists of the orders I want to work with. At the moment, it's just a prototype that can produce a prototype list of orders. When I select a specific order, you can see how my prototype actions, known as command handlers in the VLF, come into play. Each tab represents the various things I can do with an order, such as approve it, look at its details, or look at its history. I can alter the text and images associated with a prototype here and here. This allows me to continuously refine my prototype to make it clearer and clearer to all the stakeholders what it will be like when it is completed. For example, I can quickly copy and paste an image that looks like checkboxes to make it much clearer to the order processing team what searching for orders will be like. Similarly, I could add a technical note like this to make it clear to my developers how something should work. The VLF's execution model implicitly allows your end users to work on multiple business objects concurrently. This allows them to make the most use of their large screen PC devices. This means I could be working on multiple orders concurrently, or I could start to work on products at the same time, like this. As an end user, there are many ways to arrange the things I am currently working on. 
For example, I could use the Auto Tile option to arrange all my work into tiles like this. My evolving prototype is web browser based, so I can test and demonstrate how it would look and feel on an iPhone as well, like this. OK, imagine both my end users and my peer developers are happy with my prototype application. Now it's time to turn it into a real application. To get started with that, we need to choose what platforms we want to target. The target choices are Windows Desktop and or the web browser. There are pros and cons associated with each platform. To help you decide, there is material in the VLF documentation, which you can directly access from the VLF Developers Workbench. In this video, we are going to target the web browser. So now we move on to development step three, creating and snapping real programs into your prototype. This can be found in video three in this series.